Hey, so I wanted to do a painting video today, but unfortunately, as you can see, we are not upstairs in the studio. We are downstairs in my bedroom because I started a new exercise routine and my legs can barely carry me up the stairs and my arms cannot hold a brush. I was driving home and shifting my car. I was like, ooh, that's a little bit too much. So instead today, we are going to have an artist talk. And what I want to do with this is I want to talk about something that a lot of people ask me questions about and hopefully reveal the inside of what artists think and how we work and how to better understand art and have a better art appreciation. Today I wanted to cover conceptual art. A lot of people ask me, well, why is that art? And I don't understand it. And why, when anyone could do this, is this a piece of art that's in a museum? And usually that's because it's conceptual art. So to explain it in a simple terms without referencing many people, uh, conceptual art is when you have an idea that carries the entire artwork and the physical representation as long as it leads you to that idea that the artist is trying to describe isn't as important but what's important is the things that you're questioning so to go way way back there was a guy called Marcel Duchamp and he took a bathroom urinal out of a bathroom and stuck it in the middle of a gallery and called it the fountain. And he was an established painter, he was a very good cubist painter, and this was part of the data movement, which was kind of, you know, anti-mainstream art. But what's really important about it is the fact that anything can be art if it makes you question your previous ideas and thoughts and feelings about a certain subject matter that conceptual art is more about the concept and that the visu visual representation doesn't have to be as good. Uh, and anyone can do it, but the fact that they don't do it is what makes it art. Now, just because it's a conceptual art piece doesn't mean that the physical representation isn't strong enough on its own. The physical representation means that that item, that painting, that image, out of context, meaning taken out of its natural setting and put into a museum, carries a whole new meaning. For example, uh, there's an artist named Damien Hirst, and he takes a shark and he put it in this big white tank filled with formaldehyde. And a lot of people say, well, any museum does that, I could have done that. But the fact is that they didn't do that because they didn't see the possibility of that shark in that tank representing something other than a shark in a tank. It carries a lot of meaning about death, about uh, being frozen in time, this predator, and yet it's very helpless in this tank. And So what conceptual art does is it takes this object and that object should carry meanings that make you question things that you feel like you already know. Now. A big help in conceptual art, if you go to a gallery or a museum and you have trouble understanding something, is there's the physical representation, but the title usually also helps carry you along if you can't quite grasp that idea of what the artist is trying to say. That idea that they're saying, this means something more than what it looks like. So for the shark in the tank, it's actually called the physical impossibility of death in the mind of someone living. So if you didn't quite grasp what the shark in the tank was about, what the title does is it helps you make that connection between this is a piece that even though it's not hand painted or crafted or beautiful or all of these things that people require, you can't experience what that shark is going through. And it's this really physical and emotional investment to get into conceptual art. And uh, another example of conceptual art that is a bit more easily relatable is the abstract painter Jackson Pollock. Now this isn't straight up conceptual art because there is the painting motion to it, but a lot of people say, well, my five-year-old could have painted that, give him a bucket and a stick and they'd drip paint. But the idea behind it was that he's an action painter, that these robust movements 
uh, the flinging of paint were like a physical imprint of himself and the painting of motion, the motion of painting on canvas. And this idea really carries his piece because when you see that image, you can feel the effect of painter and paint, the flinging, it's, it's new, it's modern, and that, for that time period, was really strong. And so, to all those people who say, well, conceptual art is an art because anyone could have done it, the fact that you didn't do it is what makes it strong because that idea still carries itself. Now, the only way you can know if a conceptual art piece is good, unfortunately, is over time. Because uh, when you see them all at once, you think, well, all these have good ideas, they all carry, but a really strong piece will last the test of time. Does it mean something 10 years later, 20 years later, 30 years later? Does it still carry that importance with it? Otherwise, if the physical piece alone isn't strong enough to carry that idea, and it was just a cool title attached to the piece, it'll fade into non-importance. But if the piece doesn't have a strong enough idea behind it, even if it's beautiful, it's not interesting. It's not a discussion topic anymore. So that's conceptual art uh, in a very small nutshell. If you want to give me anything else that you don't understand, that you want to talk about that's interesting, uh, any art-related question, I would love to discuss it. So leave other questions in the comment section below, and I will get back to you with my utmost best at explaining why artists do the things they do. Thanks for watching.